uh, the Spirit came into our midst in a very special way. Our uh, young people uh, received the sacrament of confirmation, so we'll continue to pray for them. Uh, their names are on the front page of the bulletin, so we celebrate these young people who remind us that the Spirit uh, is alive uh, in our midst, in our parish, in us. And with all those gifts to unwrap, uh, we gather in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As the Gospel gives us today the gift of Jesus saying, Peace be with you. Last Sunday on Easter, we recall that we renewed our baptismal promises, and that still echoes within us now as again we uh, receive the sprinkling waters of uh, our baptism, our new life uh, in God. Jesus, uh, Peter walking by uh, gave people new 
life. The second reading uh, from uh, the book of Revelation puts us way into the future, an, an image, an imaginative image of what will the second coming of Jesus, the final coming, uh, be like. It talks about seven lampstands, which would be the, the seven churches uh, in Asia Minor that John was writing to. And it encompasses then the entire church, all the people will witness uh, in one way uh, or another to this the coming of Christ to complete uh, our life, our destiny. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people steamed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that Peter, when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all pure. Let us, the word of the Lord. Amen.
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos, because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet, which said, Write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down on his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the nether world. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Peace be with you. 
that he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. My favorite painter is Michelangelo Caravaggio, just known as Caravaggio. Uh, he lived about 400 years ago, spent most of his time in a relatively short, uh, vivid life uh, in Rome and uh, Milan and Malta. And he was known for the vividness of his paintings. He's a master of, of being able to emphasize different parts of a painting by the light and the shadows that, uh, that he used. An example, perhaps you've seen this, so look it up, Caravaggio's, the incredulity of St. Thomas. And the picture, the painting depicts Jesus taking Thomas's hand and guiding it with his index finger into the womb on his side. Thomas' face shows astonishment, surprise. You can imagine the shocking scene that Jesus is just so much, so vulnerable in coming to Thomas. And it is uh, that touch that makes the picture so vivid and real for us. The touch of the wounds of Christ. Bring yourself into the gospel scene which we uh, just heard. It's loaded with uh, shock, and doubt, relief, belief, all kinds of things going on in that room where Jesus was. And it's remarkable what happens in John's Gospel. The first thing that Jesus did, does when he appears, he gives the disciples the gift of peace, of shalom, that total sense of peace and well-being. That's the first thing he gives amid all the things that are going on in your life. Peace. Second, he breathes into them the gift of the Holy Spirit. It echoes what God did in creation, breathing into the first human being. And here Jesus is breathing in new life to the, the children of God. It's a, a second creation, a new creation. And it echoes in John the same moment, uh, a Pentecost is taking place right now in that same room where the peace has opened the disciples up. And then he says, just as the Father has called me, I call you to do the work of God. It's the great commission that we all have been given in baptism. This all happens in that room, the locked room, where there is peace, the Spirit of 
God and the calling to share that experience. That impact on Thomas, of course, it, it opened his eyes, his heart, and his understanding to the point where we have that unique expression summarizing all that Jesus is. And this is the, the one place in the gospel where they're put together in his witness. My Lord and my God. It's not just Jesus, not just a prophet. Some people call him Lord, but to call him Lord and God, that's the gift that Thomas gives to us. It so overtook him that in tradition, Thomas traveled, perhaps of all the, the apostles, the farthest, the tradition that he, he made it all the way to India. And there's a Christian community that takes their roots uh, from Thomas. He also was a witness to us, the power of that moment when Jesus comes. In a way, uh, I think Pope Francis uh, doesn't specifically talk about Thomas, but he, he says that we, in our faith, we need to, at times, embrace doubt. But that's part of the faith life. Uh, Pope Francis said, uh, back in 2013, he said, in this quest to seek and find God in all things, there is still an area of uncertainty there must be. So we don't put our doubts in a closet and lock them up and, and pretend they're not there. Again, Pope Francis says, if a person says that he has met God with total certainty and is not touched by a margin of uncertainty, then this is not good. If one has the answers to all the questions that is proof that God is not with him. Shannon Evans in uh, her book, Rewild, Rewilding uh, Motherhood, Path of Empowerment for Feminine and Spirituality, a nice long name. She talks also about God. She says, when we're talking about the divine, I think leaving room for a lot of mystery is the best practice. Certitude can make us rigid and uncompromising, putting us at odds with the Spirit's desire to do new things. How do we absorb all this in this Easter season, these 50 days that are are coming up, uh, those 50 days that were uh, compressed into the gospel, uh, that one room, uh, everything that we talk about in 50 days took place. There's a true story about a, a young woman, she uh, walks into a fabric shop and asks for any kind of material that's, that's noisy and, and rusty, as long as it's in white. The owner brings out some bolts of white fabric. The young lady chooses it, and as the owner is cutting the fabric, her curiosity gets to her, and she asks the woman, uh, why do you want such a, a noisy, unusual white material? The young woman says, ah, I'm making my own wedding gown myself and my fiance is blind and when I walk down the aisle I want him to know when I arrive at the altar so he's not embarrassed where do we experience Easter often it's in a love story could be just the, the love of nature giving us back life in spring. Or maybe, where do you look for the sign of, of Easter? The rustling of God sort of 
getting our attention. Maybe you go into your smartphone and start looking through the photos. Which photos are the ones that you scroll to and eagerly show others? What's that experience? That's a moment of love and Easter. What are you showing? What are you keeping? That's one way of knowing that Easter is alive in us. Amid the doubts, the uncertainties, it's still there. Twitter gives us uh, 280 characters to summarize what we want to say. One the summary from Carol Lee is really, in effect, her uh, brief Easter sermon can become the rustling of the, the, the white cloth in our life as well as we be alert to where Easter is. This is the complete message, the Easter sermon. Jesus, born, lived, loved, taught, served, challenged, died, rose again, reign. Story is yours too. Born to live, love, teach, serve, challenge, die, rise again, reign. Something rustling, stirring in you now. Could be Easter. Confirmation candidates were asked yesterday by Bishop Bartosik whether they believed in God. Uh, they responded, yes, I do. Our opportunity uh, to do the same is before us now. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, that for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, may you stir up within us those senses of your risen life, even amid the, the shadows and the doubts that are before us. And so, Lord, receive our petitions which we offer in faith. For all who follow Jesus, especially those among us, 
will be planted in the garden of the faithful, that they proclaim the gospel of the risen Christ with enthusiasm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that God's divine mercy come down upon it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who believe in the risen Christ without seeing him, that their lives reflect the radiant joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially those who need to pass through death to new life, that their hearts be filled with peace and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who gather at this table and font, that they welcome and support the newly baptized and receive. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mary Juliet, Patrick Mulehi, Dr. Saji Francis, and all our parishioners, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, through this week of discipleship, let us sincerely respond in many ways, my Lord and my God. This is our prayer, our commission through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sisters, students, boys and girls, we pray that these gifts be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people and those who have been brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every man, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You therefore most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop all those who holy to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and those who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and the hope of health and well-being while paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, Jesus took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, this is my body, which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. All of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Altar on high, 
in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Felicity, Perpetua, Lucy, Cecilia, Anastasia, Padre Pio, Hilary, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
is Christ, our Easter joy, our Easter peace. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word that my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Get a reminder, pick up one of the bulletins and especially pray for our newly confirmed young people. The names are on the cover of the uh, bulletin, so we'll pick that with you make that a special part of your Easter effort. Also, at the exits, we have these uh, prayer cards, prayer for the intersection of St. Padre Pio. So pray to God, you might want to use these. These cards are available at the exits of the church. Padre Pio, take him along with you this morning. Our Split the Pot raffle continues, so uh, the prize is up here $50,000, so that's not bad. So uh, you might want to take a chance uh, as you leave today. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.